That's how I'll become the greatest hero in the world. Oh, what's this? <laughs> oh yeah, it's like halfway, we're halfway through season three, and what a half season it's been, or it was. Uh, I'm gonna miss the, the last opening though. You got big shoes to fill, season three, part two opening. Although I have a feeling based on what I've seen, it will deliver. New villains maybe? Loving the teamwork I'm seeing. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. All Might taking a supporting role in his shriveled form. Todoroki getting yet even more powerful. Team Rocket is here. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of new characters. Transfer students. Is that Aizawa's girlfriend? I wonder what Aizawa's dating life is like. I bet he crushes it. I bet he kills it. But he doesn't really like go after it. You know what I mean? He doesn't need to. He values his own self-reliance. He's not the kind to like be consumed by superficialities of dating. You know what I mean? He's just going to do him. And that's going to be very attractive, but he's kind of hard to get. That's my read on it. But once he opens up, once you start dating him, he has this whole sensitive side you never knew about. So this is one of those openings I feel like I'm gonna grow to love. It just hurts a little bit because I really, really loved the last one immediately. This one feels like it is more showcasing like a lot of the new characters. Yes, we know he's Midoriya's quirk. Listen, <laughs> by now, you'd hope. I'm officially retired as a pro. We're still at the beach, it's so starting this episode right. Won't allow me to fight another battle. Although this is a flashback. I'm still waiting. I'm waiting. Get back there. You managed to... Rescue your friend without being injured <laughs> or getting into a fight. I'm so proud of you. How does the show do it, man? How do they keep doing it? With, like, the moments of just obvious emotion that just work anyway? You know what I mean? Nothing would make me happier. Oh, my. I'll do my best. Yeah, he's really, really into it. Even in his sleep, he's working. I'm in the dorm now. Oh yeah, we're in the dorms. This should be great. The hijinks continue, I hope. Oh, they gotta share a bathroom? That sucks. We return to normal coursework and our goal of becoming heroes. And socializing. Lots of socializing, which is very important in high school. It just seems like a lot of fun, honestly. Not just one for all, but his spirit too. Which turns out is really the thing. Create those ultimate moves. I hope this is a training episode. In order to prepare, today you'll concentrate on creating something new. Yes. I'm here for this Aizawa training. Two ultimate moves. Ultimate moves? Simply put, you must learn to lean into your strengths. I wonder if this will be a difficulty for Deku at all. I mean, he's very talented, but like a large guiding force for his actions and fighting seem to be emulation of All Might. Although part of that is just him having the one for all quirk. But if you're Deku, do you go with a smash? And if you if you do go with a smash, how do you top United States of Smash? Maybe Solar System Smash? Galaxy Smash? So underneath this like cool superhero thing of learning finishing moves or whatever, there's an idea which is put simply, but I think is important because we aspire to things. Like these kids are aspiring to be like the heroes that they they adore. And the pitfall of that is like mistaking the, the thing that you want, the thing that calls you for like the total package and the things you're seeing. And then I think the essential thing is sort of whittling down what's what and what is the thing that draws me to it and what is something unnecessary that's just the other person. That being said, I don't think it's such a bad place to start, you know, by emulating something that, that you really like. But then it's a matter of refining it, something more honest. I mean, that's been my experience largely with YouTube. Like when I started doing YouTube, I had a lot of ideas of what like doing YouTube was. And I think doing videos has been a process of me slowly becoming more honest and more authentic. To Cementos' comment about leaning into your strengths, I think I run into trouble when I have a, a too rigid idea of what the thing is that I want. Because water flows downhill, you know, and that that thought traps me into doing things that are against the grain and therefore feel like punishments almost. You have incentives to stop doing it. But if you have sort of a more fluid sense and are more broadly accepting of like that type of thing or like what utility that thing can give you sort of abstracted from the exact image you have of that thing, you can lean into the things that are natural to the point where it's harder not to do them than it is to do them. You know, like I think I've said about YouTube before that the key turning point in my mind was realizing I couldn't stop doing it. I've seen the same thing with my friends who are really good at languages. It's not that they like gritted their teeth and did something unnatural. It's that they couldn't stop doing it. They just loved it. There have been some painful moments in my life where I've had to reflect and admit to myself that I didn't really want to learn how to do something. I wanted to be able to do something. Thing, that was a big difference. And the not enjoying the, the doing of the thing, the learning of the thing, was actually an important sign that I was ignoring. And discipline, of course, is important too. And I think it's important to be able to push past certain limits, but that's sort of obvious. But I think the other side I'm talking about is when I don't hear about as much, where it's like, you know, for example, maybe you thought you wanted to be a guitar player, but maybe actually you don't care about music. You know, maybe you're just not musically inclined. And it's something about like the fame or the attention or the mastery that you want. And those are sort of easier targets because there's so many things you could apply that to. So all that together, I think is one of the challenges for the students in this exercise. These days, most pro heroes have an ultimate move. Those who don't are fools. <laughs> this may sound abstract, but we'll explain more as the day goes on. Abstraction is for my now, middle name. Change into your costumes and meet in Jim Gamma. 
How many Greek letter gyms do they have? Probably all the way through Omega. Here you will learn to serve up justice. It's, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Please allow me a question. Nita can't speak without moving his hands in a dramatic fashion. The job of a hero is to save people from all sorts of dangers. Crime, accidents, and natural or man-made disasters. This train is giving me invincible flashbacks. Your ability to gather information and make quick decisions will be judged, in addition to how well you communicate, cooperate, and lead others. And also your outfits. Learn to be consistent and you will be a great asset on the front lines. Your so is low-key really deep. doesn't necessarily have to be an attack. Take Ida's Interesting. Burst, for example. Oh, that's a special, special moment for Ida, getting recognition. <laughs> I've been doing yeah, yeah. Move all along. So it's basically our secret weapon. In addition, you should think about how you can improve your costumes. <laughs> I knew it. Now See? That you have a better understanding of your quirks. That's important. It's very important. You have it in you. Yes, yes sir. sir. I am Man, so, so inspiring. Up for this. <laughs> so am I. What's my move? Yeah, yeah, it's tough for Deku. And that speaks to a larger thing for Deku. Like many hero stories I've watched on this channel, you know, there's often a component of legacy, which is very important. And that's usually more heavily weighted in the beginning. But then there's the other element of it, which is essential, which is the authenticity aspect of it. Respecting legacy, using legacy as a strength, but not letting it become a weakness, you know, not being too rigid in it, not having blinders on based on the things that have come before. And All Might is such a powerful force, and Deku is so in awe of him, it almost feels like it could be an insult to deviate. Or at any rate, there's like a pull, you know, there's a pull to just be like All Might. Just looks like more tail wagging. It's obvious you rely too much on your tail. But my tail is my power. No, the power comes from within. Don't you watch superhero cartoons? It was underwhelming. She could maybe defeat a match, small flame. Two creations at the same time. Oh, he's everywhere at once because of his quirk. That's funny. Oh no, Deku's in his head again. Making headway. Are we about to mutter? Are we muttering? If you don't have a fixed attack style yet, then let's focus on developing your power. Think outside the box a little bit, I think. All might. Yeah, I am here. That was the most underwhelming because I am here of all time. There we go. Anything else to do. Huh? Where else would you rather be, honestly? You please focus on Why would you pass this up? This is amazing. Lesson planning. Oh, lesson planning. Oh. Aizawa, I thought we were friends. <laughs> Who are we kidding? Aizawa doesn't need lesson plans. He's the kind of guy who could literally walk into a classroom and teach the best lesson ever. There are some teachers who are so connected to what they're doing that writing it down is kind of a formality, you know? I feel that's especially so in something like an art, which I feel like this kind of fits in the category of. It's not a lecture. It's adaptive to the students. I don't know why I got so hung up on lesson planning. I was triggered by that somehow. There's no way I could miss being here for this. I'm still a UN exactly. teacher, you know. And also an enthusiast. Looks like you're having trouble. Now you explode! All right, Bakugo, it's time to come up with a creative hero quirk. I got it. Big explosion. <laughs> Huge explosion. It's like explosion, but bigger. A lot bigger. It's been a while he did explode that ectoplasm, really though. Loose. He literally was just fighting for his life against, like, 8,000 villains. That boy is incredible. Yes. Dual hero path right here. He's been planning this stuff since the entrance exam. What is oh, her what? special thing going to be? Invisible harder? Just in case anyone was wondering, I've been working on Great Brush since I was a kid. His quirk is legit. He has text. His Great Brush was so powerful, words appeared on the screen. He's the only one I've seen so far who can do that. I want so badly to like root for Mineta. I want to see people rise to their their potential. He has something, right? It's not he's not a nothing. He's just drowned by like pervness. I used to imagine wielding a lightning sword. I'm getting high. There you go. Just thinking about doing something do it. cool in real do life. It. How can I fight with these damaged arms? His arms. Yeah, I wasn't taking that into account, really. That's a big problem. Think for yourself. You're still Whoa. trying to imitate me. All Might. Oh, my man. For him to say that, I knew that was going to be the issue, but for All Might to say that himself so quickly and without, like, any kind of, like, sadness about it or attachment to Deku being him, beautiful. That was just one line, but I feel like that was huge. Yo, young Kirishima. Yo. Hey, All Might. I've got some wisdom to lay down on you. <laughs> what is this conversation, though? I'm here for it anyway. I wouldn't be a good teacher if I just gave you the answers. Mm. Use that clever head on your shoulders. What's important is that you realize your full potential on your own. You just give him a huge gift. He's suddenly good at this? Oh. <laughs> I mean, give the man respect. At least he's, you know, studying up. He's doing his best. If it works, it works. No hate. Think for yourself. Yeah, it's You're such a big moment. To imitate me. That's why it's worthy of replaying a mere 30 seconds after we first heard it. I have to have some kind of brace to reinforce my arms here. 
Yo, call up your girl. What's her name on the island? Nina? I plan on asking the development studio to improve my radiator. Oh, hey there, Deku! <laughs> I was just wondering where you were. Oh no, she just totally oh, abandoned Ida. You here for costume improvements too? Oh, it's relatable. When you see your crush, what just happened? Are they working on Bakugo stuff? Failure is the mother of invention. Oh, these are probably some of the people we saw in the intro. Thomas Edison said something like that once. Is that, uh, what is her name? My babies? It is my babies. Hey, how did you get here? Yeah, because that's what school is like. You know, people just falling on you all the time and boobs popping up in your face. I don't know about you guys, but... <laughs> High school, you know? Yeah, I forgot all your names already. Can't say I blame you. We're, we're the same. We're the same person. Well, I'm busy developing new babies, so bye! Oh, wait a second! <laughs> Great exit. Hand over your instructions, please. They should have been with the case your costume was delivered in. Who keeps instructions? Are you kidding? We work with the best design agencies available. So there's usually just a three-day turnaround. Uh, that was very well, important information for the audience. Thank you. <laughs> reduce the strain on the ligaments in my arms. Is that hard or possible? It's already happened. Did you not see two heroes? <laughs> you literally did it. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm feeling out his muscles. Seems inappropriate. My very special baby! That's not it. power suit! But I really just need support for my arms. Let's start! Holy whoa! Holy whoa. I was wondering if you could improve the cooling devices in my legs. If that's <laughs> she just Try this baby on! Yeah, she's sort of terrifying. Yeah! My quirk is in my legs, you mad woman. <laughs> yeah, I know. They should have never given this lady power. Then why don't you just run with your arms instead? <sighs> what is wrong with her? Although, did that just give Deku an idea? That really bizarre comment? Dallas Kick? Those are all the support items Hatsume's made since starting school here. She's always inventing, even when school's not in session. Speaking of finding your strengths, right? She can't not do it, she just loves it. Yeah, it's like, what else would she be doing, right? That's a good feeling. That girl is unafraid of failure. Constantly thinking of new ideas and trying them out. Especially if the failure is born by Deku's spine. Chained down by existing concepts. <sighs> It's exactly what Deku needs to hear, yeah. I think I get it. Okay. It's so simple. Okay. I understand. Yes. <laughs> Please, there's so much I want you to teach me. The legs. Dallas kick. Our training to create our ultimate moves continue. Todoroki's got to be some kind of combination, right? Fire and ice. You have anything that'll make me less stupid? I'm really curious what Deku came up with. Aizawa, how are things progressing? You're back again? We're getting there. Speaking of following your strengths, Dummy's book aside, I feel like it's natural for All Might to actually be a great teacher now because he just has more resources to focus on it now. This now is the best way he can be a hero. Whereas previously it was more like battling, physically oriented. But one of the greatest things to come out of the epic fight with All Might and All For One was really honing in on the concept that All Might's heroism was not necessarily his physical abilities. Those were just tools with which to enact his heroic tendencies, let's say. And speaking of leaning into your strengths and doing things that come naturally, the reason why All Might is the greatest hero is probably because because there's nothing else he would enjoy more than that. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing else that's more personally meaningful. He really found it. And now it's the same thing. He's going to be number one teacher or number two after Aizawa, of course, but he's going to go plus, plus, plus extra academic style. You missed a solid chance to change your entire design. It's so boring. <laughs> I like so it. So that's what cheerfully. Congratulations! Yeah, it's got sentimental value. I'm so proud you got into UA. And there are those already putting together multiple special moves. <sighs> What's it going to be? Not from my entire hand, but a blast from a single concentrated point. Into something I call... AP shot! Oh, actually, that's pretty cool. I was wrong about Big Explosion. Hey, watch out! Oh, he's weak. <laughs> kick? Texas kick? <laughs> yeah, it is a kick. <laughs> Since I inherited one for all from him, I tried to do the same thing. Copying his every technique. Right. The sneaker upgrade. One for all, full cowling, shoot style. That's a lot of words to describe describe what you're doing. You did it, kid. <laughs> I love how it's like this <laughs> this revolutionary, mind blowing technique, and literally it's just he's kicking now. Oh, I got like a very sentimental oh. ending song. They could do a little dance walk. <laughs> I'm liking the beach as usual. Now they're dance walking together. <laughs> Standing on a pile of trash, sitting on a pile of trash. That gives me great hope for the future. Who keeps polluting, polluting these beaches though? We're all at the beach now. 
The kick thing is kind of funny. It, you know, it's not that mind blowing to change from a punch to a kick. I do really love the themes in the episode. And I think the most powerful thing for me was what All Might said to Deku so casually and so easily and without any kind of like weirdness about his own image and his own legacy and seeing Deku as an extension of himself. It really isn't that, right? He really is connected to that that pure goal of doing good for the world. It's completely unselfish, which is not a surprise from All Might. You know, we know that about him already, but good things are good to see, you know, and it happened so quickly and so easily that it, it caught me off guard and it, it was sort of moving. And I really enjoyed Teacher All Might. You know, as I've said before, I think one of the things that really surprised me about the show from season one and then later seasons was that All Might is always there, right? He's always a presence. He's always a force, but he does it kind of like off screen green, if that makes sense. The school has really taken priority. The school has taken focus on the, the classmates. But like you want that, right? Like you do want the All Might Deku training. And here we get All Might Deku training and All Might other student training. It just feels right. You know, it's a nice way to transition into this new world of All Might not being the ultimate symbol of strength and power and capability. And there are just nice messages that at first might seem a little bit cliche. You know, like we hear these things all the time about follow your strengths, you know, know your gifts. But I think it's really important and it's not as easy as it sounds. There's a humility that takes. There's a self-honesty that takes. There's a willingness to fail that it takes and, and a desire for exploration and a radar for like what feels good you know recently there was a question in the monthly patreon q a about like how do you feel more connected to what you're doing and one of the things i was thinking about in answering that question was like so many of the things we do are excruciatingly painful in a way just because there's no personal connection to them at all how is something supposed to be exciting if there's no image it's connected to no vision it's connected to or chosen arbitrarily just because that's the thing that you do you know which is a lot of what we do so it's inspiring to watch and i'm looking forward to seeing some of these things in future battles which are definitely coming right because this is clearly the mid-season calm before the storm. So that's the end of episode 14, but before the video ends, speaking of Patreon, I have to give a very special, special thank you to all my patrons for all the support for making these videos possible, for allowing me to sort of experiment with new shows, which has been really fun. Special shout out to those who joined the top tier on Patreon recently. Justin, Putney, TK, Storm Gaming, and Benny Martius. Thank you to you guys. Thanks again to all my patrons. Thank you to everybody for watching. Love you guys always, and I'll see you very soon for the next video.